Ahoj, this is Zdenka. How to use DJI Osmo Mobile 6. This is a complete guide for beginners. Let's go through everything. Balancing, gimbal modes, filming modes, how to use DJI Mimo app and Light Cup app. How to film in manual mode, time lapses, hyperlapses and more. Many examples will be shown in this video. Timestamps are included, so you can find the sections you are looking for faster. You might want to bookmark this video for future. This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound Music Service I have used for a number of years. As it is a cyber week, I will let you know about their special promotion later on. Once you take your gimbal out of the box, connect a USB adapter to the charging port using a power cable. Charging time is approximately one hour, 24 minutes. And once it is fully charged, you will get about six hours and 24 minutes of runtime. As it is charging, you should download DJI Mimo. You will need to activate this gimbal in this app to use it. Before you open up the gimbal, make sure you install the clamp. Make sure the camera icon is pointing towards your camera on the phone. The clamp should be installed right in the center. If you are using a phone cover, make sure it's not installed cricket. It needs to be all in. There are pads included in the package if you feel that you need the extra protection. Simply glue them directly on the clamp in these spots. It's time to turn on the gimbal. Right now it's in locked carry position. If I press the M button or press and hold, I can check the battery level. To turn it on, simply turn the upper part towards you and then open up the gimbal. You will hear a beep and the gimbal will turn on. Then you can attach the phone to the gimbal. Just align the dots. If you wait too long, the gimbal will go into sleep mode. To turn it on, simply short press the power button and the gimbal will automatically balance the phone in a vertical position. If you want to film in a horizontal position, double tap the switch button. To turn it off, you will do exactly the same thing, but in reverse. Take off the phone, close the clamp. You will hear the beep, lights turn off. Then turn the upper part to lock the gimbal. If you want to keep your phone attached and want to turn off the gimbal, you can do so with the power button. Just press and hold. The gimbal will shut off. If you want to turn it on, long press again. The gimbal has extendable selfie stick up to 215 millimeters. You have to just pull pretty hard. At least I have to do so. Once it is fully extended, you can angle the pen motor up to 90 degrees, which is useful when you are filming in low angles. I will get to that a little bit later. To activate the gimbal, open up DJI Mimo app and follow all instructions to pair your gimbal with your smartphone. It is very straightforward. In this app, you will be filming with DJI Osmo Mobile 6, and you can also do video editing. They have many new features such as AI video editing, which I will show you much later in today's video. They have already some music you can use, but the selection is quite limited. If you want to be safe and protected and use music and sound effects on any type of social media, or YouTube and not to worry about receiving a copyright strike or takedown, you can use Epidemic Sound either grab music and sound effects from their website, or you can download their app. This way you can grab quickly any music and save it directly to your phone. Their library is massive with fresh music added all the time. Get a 30 day free trial and extra two months with 75% off by clicking my link below in a video description. The discount is valid for personal plan and it will be available for five days only starting today. So don't miss out on this offer. Hit the link below. Let's take a look at the gimbal and explain buttons and status panel. There are several lights on the status panel to let you know what is going on with the gimbal. The first light at the top on the left is the system status indicator. When it is solid green, Bluetooth is connected. When it is solid yellow, Bluetooth is disconnected. If it pulses red, the magnetic clamp is not attached properly. The magnets are not aligned. If the light pulses yellow or green, it is in standby mode. If the light blinks red and green alternatively, the gimbal is updating firmware, or it can also mean that the firmware update failed. And if you see solid red light, that means abnormal status is detected. Another light below indicates how much battery is left. Green means that you have 60% and up. 
solid yellow is 24 60%, and solid red is 6 to 19%. If the red blinks, the gimbal has less than 5% left. The third indicator on the panel will tell you what gimbal mode you have currently selected. Before I talk about gimbal modes, let's first talk about operating modes. Most of the time you will be in upright position in portrait or landscape mode. Side grip mode is this one. This way the gimbal is out of the way and you can get your camera close to anything. Under slug mode allows you to film in low angles. You can also extend a selfie stick for easier filming or you can film in low position. Just expand the selfie stick and tilt it towards you. Every time you change the position, always press trigger two times to recenter the gimbal. Gimbal modes, what are they and when do you use them? First of all, you will switch between them by pressing the M button. First one is follow mode. In this mode, both pan and tilt motors are unlocked. They will follow movement sideways or up and down. This is suitable if you are filming where you need any type of vertical movement. Next one is tilt lock mode. In this mode, only pan movement is followed. This mode is great for walking forward, backwards, maintaining the same frame while going from high to low movement. Or simple panning shot to the side. FPV mode is next. In this mode, all three axes are unlocked. Pan, tilt and roll. This is used for shooting the first person view. Just think of it as an airplane. Spin shot is the last mode. In this mode, all motors are again unlocked. You will then control the rotation of a joystick in both directions. I have created gimbal modes tutorial in the past. I'll link it below for those interested. DJI Osmo Mobile 6 has the ability to film in any app without the need to always go back to DJI Mimo to switch the gimbal modes. I'm using iPhone 14 Pro. Let's say I want to film in native camera app. So how can we use the gimbal in native camera app? What the buttons work? You will use the M button to switch between gimbal modes. You will use joystick to move the camera around you will use this rotate button. Press two times to switch between portrait and horizontal mode. You will use the record button to start and stop recording. If you are in a photo mode and you press and hold the record button, you will take photos in burst mode. This is great when you want to take action photos. It takes a whole bunch of photos and then you can choose which one you want to keep. If you happen to have iPhone 14 Pro or iPhone 14 Pro Max and want to learn everything about native camera app, best camera settings and all that, I have created a tutorial on that as well. I'll link it below. Last button in native camera app you can use is trigger. If you double press, you will recenter the gimbal. If you press and hold, you will get to lock mode. It will override any other gimbal mode you are using. If you press once, then press again and hold, you will get to sports mode. The gimbal's motors will work much faster. The follow movement will be faster. I use this for whip transitions, for example. Let's open up DJI Mimo again. I'm using iPhone 14 Pro. If you are using Android, some of the features may not be available to you. And this will also depend on what Android you have. They vary. They are all very different. In this app, trigger and switch buttons offer more features. You will be able to also use this side wheel. Let's start with the switch button. When you press one time, you can switch between the front and the rear camera. If you will be filming in 1080p with a front or selfie camera, tracking mode will be enabled as well as beauty mode. If you will be filming in 4K, 
you will get only tracking mode, as beauty mode is not available in 4K and 60 frames per second. If you press two times, you will switch between landscape and portrait mode. If you press three times, you will switch between photo and record mode. Trigger has the same functions as filming in native camera app, and I explained those earlier. It has one more function in DJI Mimo. If you press one time, you will enable tracking mode. You will turn it off the same way. You can also enable tracking by simply dragging a box around the object you are filming. Tracking is perfect when you are vlogging, walking around. You don't need to worry about not being framed. The gimbal will track you wherever you move, and it makes a big difference. Let's talk about the side wheel. Here is where you can control your zoom and focus. If you press the wheel, you will switch between zoom and focus. You will see focus distance on the screen. When it comes to zoom, you will see a little jump here and there. That is because it's switching lenses. If you let go, you will see how it changed into three dots. Ultra wide angle, standard and telephoto. Anything between is digital zoom. You will get the best quality if you film with default lenses. You can also zoom in and out with your fingers. Let's go through settings first. First setting is video. Here you can turn on the flash. If you will be filming in automatic mode, you're not going to be able to change white balance. This is only possible if you will be filming in manual mode. If you are new to photography or video, it is a good idea to turn on the grid lines as it will help you with composition. Selfie flip is on by default. Face tracking for selfie is enabled. So when you switch from rear to selfie camera, it will automatically start tracking. If you don't want the tracking to start every time you switch to cameras, here is where you can turn it off. Dolby Vision option is here as well if you are after the Dolby Vision HDR look. Auto shot guides are automatically enabled, so whenever it finds a suitable scenario, it will recommend some creative shots. Let's go to gimbal settings. Gimbal quick start guide will show you how to use the buttons and gimbal in general. Gimbal modes are next. If you hit this little question mark, you will get tutorials section where you can learn how to use those modes. Follow speed is set to medium by default. This is how the motors react, the end movement. You have three choices, fast, medium, and slow. If you find that the horizon is a bit off, not straight, here is where you can calibrate your gimbal. And if you still find that the gimbal is not straight, below is horizontal gimbal adjustment, where you can fix it manually. Side wheel mode is set by default to zoom. If you prefer manual focus instead, you can change it here, or you can completely disable the function of the wheel button here. Sometimes there might be a situation where you don't want accidentally touch the wheel to change the zoom or focus. By default, the switch button changes between photo and video mode if you press it three times. You can change it here to a quick menu if you prefer. This will pull out this type of navigation. I prefer this setting instead of photo video only. Joystick speed can be changed here. You can change the movement of the joystick from free to horizontal vertical. You can invert joystick directions if you prefer and side wheel direction as well. If you are filming somewhere where you need quiet filming, you can turn off the sound of all the beeps here. Last section is general where you can enable quick lunch. I have this enabled as once I attach the phone to the gimbal, it will ask me to open the app right away. I don't have to look for it. Let's continue with all icons on the left. Shot guides is the section where you can select scenario, shoot clips you select, and let the AI editor edit the final video. Home button is at the top. I will go to that section a little bit later. Let's talk about filming in automatic mode. Most of the time you will tap on the screen to lock focus and even adjust exposure by sliding the sun icon. If you will be filming multiple clips in the same location, you can adjust the exposure here under the automatic filming section. 
This is also useful when you don't want to lock focus, but wants to adjust exposure only. Again, in automatic mode, you cannot control white balance. If you want to film in manual mode, it's quite simple. You always want to double the shutter speed and keep the lowest ISO possible. So if I'm filming in 24 frames per second, I will select 1 40th shutter speed. If I film in 30 frames per second, I will select 1 60th. ISO starts with 100. If it's too dark, select a higher number. If you will be filming outdoors on a bright sunny day and you already have ISO 100, you just need to place a variable ND filter over the lens and you will most likely need counterweights to balance the gimbal. I will link all those accessories below. When you film in manual mode, you can select white balance in the settings. As now, it's going to be enabled and all your settings are displayed below the zoom bar at the bottom. Resolution and frame rates are next. On the right is the highest resolution 4K, middle is full HD, and smallest is on the left, HD. Frame rates are below. Glamour effect is the next icon. If you will be filming in 4K or 60 frames per second, you're not going to be able to use this feature. You have to select 1080p or 720p and lower the frame rate for the camera you are filming with. If you tap with a rotation button to switch between rear and selfie camera, tracking and beauty mode will be automatically enabled. Let's go to the right side. At the top, you will see gimbal battery, smartphone battery, flashlight, gimbal mode, and if you have zoom or focus enabled on this side wheel. Next icon is for switching rear and front camera, and below the record button is where you can enable gesture control. You have a choice between follow and shoot, which enables tracking or shoot only, so no tracking will be enabled. Gesture control is not going to work if you have zoomed in three times or higher or when the gimbal is in FPV mode. The play icon below is to access your gallery. Let's go all the way to the right. First one is stories. You can choose one of the templates or select a custom story and follow the directions to create that. Panorama is next. Here you have choice between 3x3, 240 degrees and clone me panorama. Photo mode will let you take photos in automatic and manual mode. You can turn on timer and enable glamour effect. Video mode is next. I already mentioned all details earlier. 8x slow motion is filmed in 1080p. You can film slow motion in automatic or manual mode. Dyna zoom is next. At the top, you will select if you are moving in or moving out. Instructions are clearly displayed on the screen. Time lapses can be filmed in automatic and manual mode. You can choose frame rates and resolution. It's best to use a tripod. At the top, you will hit this little arrow to pull out all controls. Duration stands for how long you will be recording the time lapse. Interval will let you choose between 0.5 seconds all the way to 60 seconds. The faster moving scene, the faster the interval you will select. The slower moving scene, the slower interval you will select. Let's say I select a 2 seconds interval and I will film for 10 minutes. At the top, you can see that the final clip will be 12 seconds long. Time-lapse mode at the bottom will let you film static time-lapse, motion-lapse moving left to right, right to left, and a custom motion where you can select up to four points. Simply select one angle, tap on the blue square, move the camera to another spot, tap again, and so on. The gimbal will follow path you selected. Finally, the last one is hyperlapse. This is when you are not going to use a tripod, but you will be moving. You can also film hyperlapses in automatic or manual mode. You can change resolution and speed. You have a choice five times, 10 times, all the way up to 30 times hyperlapse. Most of the time I film at five times or 10 times. I'm just finding that everything else is way too fast. Let's hit the home button. In this section, you will find AI Editor, 
which will automatically edit clips for you. Select clips and just wait. If you need a different template, you can change it here. You can also go to editor where you have choices from templates and pro. Templates will again automatically edit the video for you. Pro is a simple editor where you can edit on your own. As I mentioned earlier, they have some music here, but if you need music from a service like Epidemic Sound, you can certainly upload it here. Lightcut is another app recommended by DJI. Here you can connect your gimbal to this app. Once you go to Inspire Cam, you can select story you like and follow all shots to create it. You will film this in vertical mode. However, you can change it to 16x9 at the top if you like. You can also switch between front and rear camera, enable enhance and strength of this effect, as well as beautify. Let's go back to homepage. When it comes to video editing, here you can hit one tap edit, select clips, and let this app edit everything for you. Once the edit is created, you can still change the template. You can remove the stickers, change music. So yes, you can use Epidemic Sound Service here as well, add text, use filters, change order of the clips and more. Another way would be choosing a template of your choice and then selecting clips. Lastly, if you choose new project, you will be taken to the same video editing app as in DJI Mimo. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more filming tutorials. See you in the next video. Ciao, ahoy.